Good day friends, Paul here. As we are sheltering at home, securing, protecting our indoor environment has become more important than ever, in particular in terms of electromagnetic fields or EMFs. We're on the internet more, we're relying on this technology more, and 5G has really been ramping up lately. I was inspired to do this video from a previous video's comment section, a video I did on shielding EMFs around the home with aluminum foil. And that video has generated tons of views and comments, especially since the sheltering in place uh, mandates have gone into effect over the past month. And what I'm about to share in this video, you want to stick around because you cannot make this stuff up. I'm citing sources from the Department of Defense, the World Health Organization, as well as the FCC, and the Institute of Electrical Engineers, and more. So this has been a real eye-opener for me, so much so that before doing this video, I actually disabled my 5G SSID, um, which stands for Service Set Identifier, you can access all that from your router or modem router's uh, router configuration utility. You typically get on that by going on the internet when you're plugged, when you're connected securely into your network. And I've just disabled that entirely for 5G because I've come to the conclusion through all my research that for the average consumer who's just on the internet, and I'm an internet professional even, 5G is not necessary for probably 99% of us. Those who are in um, industry or particularly the medical fields or the defense uh, industries, 5G is going to be a huge boom or plus because extremely low latency, in other words, real-time applications where potentially lives are on the line. Um, also, there's a greater frequency uh, range as far as not being overcrowded in the frequency spectrum. The uh, 2.4 gigahertz range is about 100 megahertz of range, whereas 5G is going to be upwards of 1,000 megahertz of frequency spectrum range to operate within. So, I mean, that's going to be a plus two. The higher you go up in frequency, the more range there's going to be to play around with. So that makes sense as well. However, there's a lot of negatives here as well as far as the average consumer, and that's what I'm going to be taking on in this video. Now, first of all, I'm going to, I'm going to put up a chart here showing visually how uh, cell phones at 1900 megahertz typically with 3G and then uh, how the, those, you can see on the cell phone signal on my chart here at 1900 megahertz, how that's not really far off Wi-Fi. You can see the Wi-Fi signal here at 2.4 gigahertz. Well, 5G guys, you can see I've shown here on the chart is comes in at 28 gigahertz or about 10 times what our traditional 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi signal is. 28 to 90 gigahertz is the range allocated as being safe. That's an operative word here, safe guys, in this uh, protocol, in this 5G protocol. Now how that's been established is very interesting and stick around for this one because uh, it's been established by the Institute for Electrical Engineers and the International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation. Now, quickly, back to the graph here, because you can see that ionizing radiation is towards the right end of the graph, which what starts generally with ultraviolet radiation from the sun, and then moves up from there through the medical applications with CT scans and x-rays, and then finally the ultimate end, gamma rays, in outer space and black holes and things like that, which are really, really high frequency radiation. 
when radiation ionizes something, electrons are displaced. And as far as human bodies are concerned, it has to do with electrons are displaced from our cells. That's right. That's why you don't want to get a bunch of x-rays or CAT scans because when we undergo such high frequency radiation, they, those uh, procedures actually displace electrons from the cells in our body, which can create cancer. Cell phones and 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi and even 5G, guys, is well below the ionizing radiation showed here on the graph. It's more in the lines with microwaves. If you stick your hand in a microwave oven or put yourself in a microwave oven, sure, it's not ionizing radiation, but you're still going to get cooked because of the intensity of radiation in a boundary. No matter what you're using, if you're still on LTE like I am, 4G, or 2.4 gigahertz around the home with Wi-Fi, keep your devices off your body. That's the one takeaway as far as being as safe as possible in this paradigm that we're living in. Don't put your phone up to your head. Always talk on speaker. Keep that thing six inches from your body. Do not sleep with your phone. Keep it on a table at arm's length. Institute for Electrical Engineers and the International uh, Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection set limits for the 5G protocol, guys, up to 90 gigahertz. That's right, so 28 to 90 gigahertz as a range. And you know how that was determined? I'm gonna tell you, by the Department of Defense. That's right. Dating from 2002 to 2007, actually going back to the 80s, the Department of Defense has developed an active denial technology, which is established at 95 gigahertz, uh, which is just beyond what's been allocated for 5G. I hope you're still listening to this broadcast. That's 5 gigahertz away from the maximum of the 5G protocol. This active denial technology is a non-lethal um, defense te technology to create pain, basically. That, that's my wording. Um, using a gallium nitride, which is, uh, through my electrical experiments, I recognize that as an element used in LED lighting. And a gallium nitride semiconductor which projects man-sized or 1.5 meter beams. Um, I brought up my tape measure here. That's on the order of five feet. A, a beam that's sent out about five feet of 95 gigahertz radiation up to 1,000 meters. So that's about, what, three quarters of a mile, which creates a skin surface heating sensation a skin surface heating sensation. This is from the Department of Defense's website, um, the Active Denial Technology page. You can check it out yourself. Um, in extreme examples, it's caused blisters um, up to a skin depth of 1 64th of an inch, which is equivalent to three sheets of paper. And uh, in very extreme, it's caused second degree burns. So if the military has developed that as a non-lethal deterrent, do we really want to get into 5G? Well, you know, many people suffer from this thing called electromagnetic hypersensitivity, which is a condition uh, known to the World Health Organization as EHS, electromagnetic hypersensitivity, where individuals perceive sensations like burning, um, tingling, nausea, dizziness, uh, lack of focus and concentration, but, and then it's often passed off for the protocol is to, you know, talk to your doctor and get a psychological evaluation, perhaps. But guys, is this really a psychological condition? People who are suffering from electromagnetic hypersensitivity, I suffer from it. I mean, by that I mean, when I turn on Wi-Fi, for example, on my phone, I can actually feel um, an energy or a tingle in my hand and the lower part of my uh, forearm. 
I can actually feel that. So people who are saying this stuff, I don't think it's just, you know, all up in the head as uh, some of these organizations would have us believe. Suffice to say that many countries and municipalities are questioning the 5G implementation. As we progress in technology, guys, we're going further down the road of higher frequency radiation and, and potentially greater health risks associated with those higher frequencies. It's inevitable. It's going to keep climbing, climbing up that ladder because the payoffs in industry and real-time medical applications, defense applications for sure, low latency, those are great advantages. But for protecting yourself or myself as the average consumer, as we're having to do right now through this staying at home mandates nationwide and getting through what we're going through right now, be a savvy consumer. And I hope this video is helping you to do that. Um, thanks to you guys for posting comments on my tin foil video, because having just picked up a dual band router, I was all psyched to just do everything 5G. And my Samsung phone hooks into 5G. My Dell laptop does it as well. There's faster download and upload speeds with 5G. But after reading what I've read, I've taken a step back and I've actually disabled that on the router because even though you may not be accessing those or using those on your device, that router or modem router is still transmitting or looking for those devices to attach to in 5G. It's still sending higher frequency radiation into your living environment, potentially, if that's not disabled. I really look forward to reading your comments below on this one. Thanks for watching, and we will see you guys soon.